Hello boys and girls, we got a repair video today and it's a 2010 Maserati Quattro Porte and today I'm going to remove the alternator and to do that I need to remove the intake manifold. Now the problem this car is having it's the alternator is charging at about 12 volts which is not enough should be about 13.8.9 somewhere along those lines it's also got a Christmas tree going on on the inside. Weird stuff going on. The glove box opens on its own and the uh, battery terminals are getting hot. So to me that sounds like an alternator issue, charging system issue. And it also drains the battery pretty quickly when the car is parked. There's the alternator. Right there. And you can see this guy is in the way. And it's a pretty big intake and it goes back all the way back to the firewall so I need to remove the wipers these covers over here I, I'm hoping the fuel rails will come out with the intake manifold and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes never done this job before what I'm gonna do this time I'm, I won't be recording what I'm doing because I am in a hurry I need to kind of fly through this I'm gonna show you my progress as I go and tell you what I removed and how so next stop something will be removed all right update so after removing this big cover up top this is what's next the wipers first now there's almost always an issue once you remove these 17 uh, millimeter nuts these wipers will not come out easily and if that's your case what you want to do is Put back the nut so it's almost flush uh, with the stud and grab a small hammer and keep hitting it with one hand and then uh, with the other try lifting the wiper up. This way you're, you're kind of you're hammering down on the stud. Remember to put the nut on. Do not hammer on the stud. You're, you're going to break the mess up the threads. So do that on both ends and then you'll see them pop up once the wipers are off then you have an, a little allen key allen uh, bolt right here pretty self-explanatory right there only on the, on the driver's side wiper then it's this plastic right here you got a bunch of uh, you got a phillips an allen and a torx torx is uh, 25 allen is 4 mil remember to disconnect the washer fluid hose and then uh, you're gonna want to watch because this will get caught on the wiper stud and it actually went out that way now this plastic and probably the wiper motor all right update as you can see the wiper motor is off the there's a, a bunch of eight mil nuts and a few bolts right along inside this area it's kind of obvious there's two or one on each side right here also there you want to make this loose because it's going to be easier for you to remove this harness which I'll show you in a second where it, it unscrews and then the, 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 the motor itself is just three uh, 10 mil two 10 mil uh, bolts one 10 mil nut that becomes loose as well but it's not going to be easy to, to uh, remove that's why you want to remove this plastic or make it loose and this connector is right there right over here that's pretty self-explanatory the tab you just lift that up don't break this this is kind of fragile and uh, this should just come off somehow all right removing this thing is not easy Break loose the fuse box here, uh, 110 mil here, 110 mil here. Do that first. Pull it away, and then you can somehow remove this. This thing. All right. Update. Now, I mean, you gotta use you know your common sense for these uh, clips and stuff. Just uh, remove these lines avoid uh, removing hoses and stuff i don't know what's going on in the back there i'm going to find out uh, seems like there's a line 
maybe going into the intake yeah this one here this guy yeah yeah it is going back into the to the back of the intake i but i don't know how to take it off because i can't see it i don't know if you can see it or not some kind of a maybe maybe it's a hose clamp not sure anyways i'm gonna leave that I, i'm actually gonna now and uh start remove the allen bolts that hold the intake in uh so i got these all these lines off its uh clips and stuff the pcv stuff these fuel lines i believe there could be return lines fuel return lines there's there was almost no fuel pressure but uh, what i did at first and you want to probably do that too remove this cap you're going to see a valve inside right there put a rag over it and uh, with a small screwdriver press that in release any pressure that may be in the fuel lines and do this on both sides there's the same kind of a cap on the other side these are 17s right here both sides so now i'm just going to swing this over don't worry about fuel it will it will evaporate so i'm gonna kind of probably just tie it up so it's out of my way like i did this line here now this goes uh, into the intake here so this bungee holds away this same thing clips and stuff here it's pretty self-explanatory I'm gonna have to remove this too. One of these clamps, prob probably, probably this one here. Now the way to remove these, and same clamps go here and here, is you stick a flat screwdriver inside and just kind of wiggle it, and this will open up. You can actually reuse these clamps. So that's what I did on these. These guys here, what you do now when you install them, you put it on, you, you know, hook them on, and then you squeeze it squeeze this too with uh, some kind of pliers long nose pliers or, or cutters cutters work nice but you know without cutting the actual clamp they don't need much to go back on so your choice here you, you can remove it here or here i chose this because it's the whole piece is rubber so it kind of pulled up on me i did have to unhook these hooks here so this goes back a little bit then you want to unplug the throttle body so that's ready to go and uh, like i said before this should come up with the fuel rails and injectors because these are port injectors so it's all kind of you know all together not sure what's underneath and like i said not sure what's in the back how is that that gonna hold me up so next step is to oh yeah fuel injectors these guys here you want to with a flat screwdriver push this up if for some reason this pops up for you, put it back in. That's how they they will go back in. Now the only thing I had trouble with is this clamp right here that holds this harness here. It was all the way to the right, so I just loosened up this Allen bolt right there and moved it back. So I had access to the spring on the fuel injector. All right, mission accomplished. We got fuel coming out. Now the reason why the intake is like this, just want to show you. This harness is attached underneath the intake, right here. So, not sure this goes somewhere along there. If I'm able to remove this line here. Yes, I am. Okay. Maybe. It does twist. I may need two hands. Yep, that was fairly easy. So just a vacuum line, put it aside. And this line here, the one that's attached in the back of the intake, that's another vacuum line. And where's the end of it? This guy here, just remove this from the brake booster right here. Pry it out with a screwdriver lightly. Be careful not to break it because it's plastic. And you can remove it with the line. Here's the intake. More fuel. We got spillage. Yeah, that's fine. This, this is a special rag right here. It will soak it all up. That's more than I thought. Okay. 
All right. Now these are pretty hard and I'm not sure if I can reuse these. I don't know. Once uh, I'm done with the alternator, I'm gonna inspect those gaskets. And this is what it looks like. And there's the alternator. Now I can look at the intake runners, see what that looks like. I can see the valves. Well, they're actually pretty clean. They're intake valves after all. You know, thanks to port injection, your intake valves will always, most of the time, remain clean. All right, now before you, uh, what I do, before you take anything really off, uh, you know, that's uh, gonna expose the, I guess, inside of your engine, you wanna blow compressed air around it. So anything falls in, well, there won't be much to fall in. What I'm gonna do, I did that, I'm gonna, I actually kept vacuuming also around that area where the wipers were, because this car has been sitting on, under a tree for quite some time now. I'm still gonna vacuum all this inside, inside each runner. Uh, again, just to make sure there's no debris inside at all. Forgot to mention to remove this hose because it's so hard. I don't know if that used to be that way. I had to remove these uh, two bolts to remove this whole thing. Then the hose came out and then I just flipped it over or uh, twisted it and put it back in so no debris falls in there. Okay, obviously uh, I already cleaned these up. Let's see, they're looking nice and shiny. I did wipe the runners on the inside a little bit. You want to cover these up. Again, avoid anything falling inside. Then the tensioner is... I'm not, not sure if you're going to see that. Right where the... Right in the middle. The pulley that's right in the middle. Right there where the wrench ends. Okay, so this is going to go this way. Pull it. Take the belt off. I left the wrench on it holding the belt i'm not replacing the belt uh, i'm holding the belt with the bungee over here it's actually probably easier to re to um re replace the belt if you are from underneath because this is in the way right here 13 mil right here back of the alternator this nut here this plastic and then the plug and now i'm gonna proceed and remove this troublemaker right here these two Allen bolts. Let's see what size those are. Eight. All right, still not out. What I had to do, this, this is a coolant. This is an oil cooler right here. And uh, this is a coolant line going to the oil cooler. So if you're gonna remove this line, you're gonna spill coolant. So what I did was this, it's got a kind of a bracket over here that holds it. Remove that Allen bolt. From here, this will give you a tiny bit more room. You'll be able to move this uh, coolant line away. Then you start prying from the left side first. Use a small pry bar or a screwdriver, pry this, uh, pry this out, clear the coolant line, and try and jiggle this out. This is a tight fit, especially on my right side here, driver's side. You see, still got a, well now it's easy. There we go, now it's out. You hear that? It is, it is kind of noisy, but there's also some kind of a clicking noise. Maybe, uh, I, I mean, I'm not gonna waste time and take this apart but maybe someday we'll see all right now is also a good time to inspect the pulleys and everything else the belt the belt is needs to be replaced but i'm just not doing it now alternator bolts are different length this one is the passenger side this is the driver's side all right i do i was provided with a used alternator so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, install that. I'm going to inspect the uh, these rubber seals on the intake. See if I can uh, reuse them or not. 
Probably not. This thing has over 100,000 miles, 110, something like that. If this was, I don't know, maybe 60,000, then I would probably reuse it. Or not 10 years old. But this rubber seems, uh, you know, on the hard side. Look at this. That's dirty. I may also give this a clean. You can see the a little more fuel. You can see the injectors. Maybe I shouldn't mess with that. I don't want any debris, any dirt falling onto the injectors. And you don't want to spray anything. Things like brake cleaner on the injectors. Now is a good time to clean out the throttle body. I did actually clean this a while ago. I'm going to give it another clean. And now it's going to be easier since it's out. All right, so I'm going to start uh, putting it all back together. And if, any if anything comes up, I'll let you know. The Maserati is back together. Still have a few lights. Low on fuel. Air pressure tire sensor. This guy is on because the rear parking brakes are... No, actually this guy. The rear parking brakes are just, well, the shoes are gone. You know, there's got to be a sensor on it. There's sensors everywhere. And this guy is on because the guy before me, the guy that put the brake pads uh, upside down or uh, reverse, there is a video on it. Uh, when I first got this thing, the title of that video is How, N How Not to Do Brakes on the Maserati. Yes, somebody on the front left and rear left put the inner brake pads the other way around and the sensor is cut the one that goes on the actual brake pad and that's why this light is on but no more check engine no more uh, traction control probably three others our uh, battery was was on yeah battery was on check engine light was on and something else traction control or something I don't know whatever it doesn't matter everything was, was lit up Right now it's been running for uh, probably 40 minutes or so. Did maybe three miles and it's been sitting, idling. I'm gonna shut this thing off. Look, this opened on its own. <laughs> and I can't close it now. If I start it, all right, starts right up. So now I can close it. It will stay closed. I can open it with that. But yeah, that's weird. And before this was hot, I could not even touch it. Actually, well, if I waited a little longer, I would probably burn myself. Uh, when I, you know, touched it the first time I've noticed. But this time it's cold. So that's, that's fixed. All I got left is those big plastic covers. And that's it. Not a difficult job, just a bit uh, time consuming. A lot of fun putting, getting this plastic piece out and putting it back in. Everything else is uh, kind of self-explanatory. Don't forget to clean the throttle body since that's out. Alright guys, I hope this uh, video helped you out. Hit the like button, subscribe, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.